Cosworth used to be owned by the Ford Motor Company, but after it was sold off and the adventure in Formula One ended, it was forced to diversify. It's now a wide-ranging engineering company working in defence and clean air technology who happen to also build a Formula One engine. As a study in diversification, it's very interesting. I think diversification is something that always takes a little bit longer than people would like to believe. I mean, in our case, it took uh, realistically 18 months and we had the advantage of a brand name that was extremely well known and had a very good set of attributes associated with it. Um, the result of that was when we introduced ourselves to the new markets, most people had heard of us. Uh, they wanted to meet with us, but even so it took 18 months to really build an engagement model. We've moved into uh, really four adjacent markets, one of which is sports. Um, we've gone into um, aerospace and defence, clean energy and automotive. It was quite a challenge for us to work out how we were going to be taken seriously. And we decided that the only way that we could uh, really demonstrate our wares was to actually build an engine. And to that end, we decided we would build a small heavy fuel engine for unmanned aerial vehicles, which is what we did. Having built the engine, uh, it came to the attention of the Department of Defense in the America. And uh, on the back of that, they gave us a fairly substantive contract that has just continue to grow from that date onwards. Cosworth's latest defence initiative is the very opposite of Formula One glamour. It's this rather dull looking component from the inside of a diesel generator. If Cosworth can help the Ministry of Defence save 50% of the fuel on this, that means a lot less lives potentially at risk delivering fuel into the theatre operations. If Formula One continues on the strategy it's on at the moment, whereby it cannot be allowed to be a spending arms race, then yes, we see huge value in remaining involved in the sport. Um, clearly, if it becomes financially irresponsible, then uh, it's not something that we would engage with. I think 2013 is going to be a pivotal moment. We've got a great opportunity in the sport to really uh, rewrite the rules. And um, I think if we pick a set of regulations which are based around a very small number of fixed points, and encourage innovation, we will really electrify the sport. And I think the small number of fixed points that are being discussed at the moment are to limit the amount of fuel and to limit the maximum fuel flow and give complete freedom to uh, innovate in the areas of capturing waste energy uh, off the car. And uh, then the team and the driver that manage to do the best job with a fixed amount of resource will be the guys that win. Today's rules are pretty much drawn around very high drag solutions for the car. Um, if you are going to write a set of regulations around a fixed amount of energy, then you absolutely do not want a high drag car. Um, so I think by virtue of addressing the drag characteristics of the car, you'll also materially change the overtaking opportunities. These waste energy recovery opportunities will not only make the vehicles go faster, um, but they will then, I think, for one of the first times in quite a long time, start generating technology development which will be relevant to areas outside motor racing. The risks of 2013 are we let the opportunity slide past. And I think if that happens, the attractiveness of Formula One to new entrants will be markedly diminished, and I don't think that will be to the good of the sport. Facing new markets worth potentially £70 billion a year is certainly a far cry from banging your head against a brick wall trying to build a more expensive and more powerful racing engine than your rivals. As an object lesson in diversification and taking your core competences into adjacent markets, Cosworth is certainly a good example.